Okay. Three. <coughs> okay, you can go, I think. Hi, everyone. Um, welcome to the session here. We're going to um, have a chat with um, Joe um, from McKellar, and we've got Tom um, here with us um, uh, as well. Um, and um, yeah, like it's can, I hope everyone can hear me. If you can't, um, please let us know um, in the chat. Um, and we're going to keep, uh, we'll have a look at the chat and just make sure that any questions and things that you may have, we'll try and try our best to answer them. But I'm really excited to um, be part of this session because um, Joe and I actually have got, we've kind of semi cross paths, like we know lots of mutual people, um, but we've not actually met properly. So this is the first time we've, we've actually it's had a time. Yeah, this is yeah. seeing your, seeing your, seeing your face moving rather than a, in a, um, in a social media context. Yeah, it's weird, isn't it? So, um, <laughs> yeah, so I don't know. I mean, I, I know that you uh, worked before for Double Barrel Brewery in Reading, uh, yep. which is where, where I'm based. So um, I know Double Barrel really well. Um, but yeah, I was really excited to hear that you, you're with McKellar at the minute, and I'm a big fan of McKellar. Um, so um, do you, would you mind just giving us a bit of an introduction? Just tell us a bit about what you do at the minute and your kind of beer history and what took you to McKellar? Sure. Um, I think... It, it, this is this is fun having this conversation with my boss on this call as well. Um, <laughs> um, no, uh, absolutely. I've I mean I've been in the beer industry for thirteen odd years now, um, and I think for ten of those years, uh, sort of my professional ambition was to work for for McKellar. They've always been sort of a, as far as I'm concerned, the height of what I love in beer. Um, not so not just the quality of the liquid we produce but the way in which we operate bars the way in which we uh collaborate with rock stars with film stars with big companies you know um some of you may or may not know we have two bars in london that we opened uh in partnership with rick astley um who is a big uh, a big fan uh Mikel Bieso our, 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 our owner it was a, a massive fan and continues to be a massive fan of Rick Astley and and he was like well if we're opening somewhere in London in the UK then let's open somewhere with one of my heroes and he's a massive beer fan so this is the thing I've heard about this online and um but yeah it, he really is he's like massively massively into it um really into um, it uh really yeah. passionate really interested in flavors really interested in getting involved um, he's got a great uh, flavour palette um, and he's done some really cool tastings with us both here in the UK and over in, in, in Denmark. And the, f the first few times we opened our bars when we were allowed to, um, <laughs> he did uh, private gigs in the bars and we have people streaming out the doors or trying to see him. Um, so we, we're hoping to, to do more stuff with him once social distancing is... Uh, it, you know, we when we can pack a ton of people in in our little bars in in London. Yeah, that would be incredible. I I think um I was watching a, a historian the other day that was saying that you know after pandemics there is always like you had the Roaring Twenties in the nineteenth century, you know, um mm. no twentieth century. So um people will want to get close to one another. We're social animals, aren't we? So absolutely. Um, shall we um open the beer? And I'd love um like Tom, Joe, and um, they'll kind of talk us through um. The, this beer in particular, but also um, like this part of the Limbo series, which I'm a, I'm a big fan of. Um, but would you like to talk us through it? Absolutely. Sure thing. Um, I mean, basically the Limbo series comes as a uh, knock-on effect of, uh, of a beer we had called uh, Henry and his Science, uh, where we use a specific kind of yeast uh, that we uh, developed ourselves. Um, called Merkelensis, and um, uh, the Limbo series is a continuation of uh, that style of beer where we use different fruits um, to uh, basically uh, differentiate each beer, but also um, uh, let the yeast sort of feed from the, from the, uh, from the uh, natural uh, ingredients included. Um, it's a good point Tom makes there is unlike a lot of other alcohol-free beers, this is fully brewed. Um, it's not, you know, back distilled or, or you know, um, or, or the, the alcohol board off. This has been a, a work in protest, a work in protest? 
a work in <laughs> progress um, uh, between Mikel and Dirk, who's the, the, the brewmaster and head brewer of De Proof in, in Belgium, where we brew this beer. And it's been sort of in R&D for three or four years now of being able to have a, a food safe ye yeast that completely brews out fermentable sugars, but doesn't uh, doesn't create alcohol. So this is very similar to um, uh, traditional alcoholic beers uh, and alcoholic fermentation, but we've just spent a lot of time working with food yeasts uh, to create beers that is com uh, that are completely brewed out in a as close as you can get to traditional style. Yeah. Um, without, you know, low temperature distillation or um, or post fermentation alcohol removal. So. Yeah, exactly. And the main aim of the beer is to sort of show how the microorganisms uh, will react uh, to the yeast used um, to give it different flavors. So uh, everyone is different in its own way, I suppose. Uh, but this Riesling one really does kind of hit a different level, doesn't it? I, I must say, I, I tried this for the first time uh, do you know what? It was only in January. Uh, <laughs> I placed a big kind of order with Mikella, um just before Brexit, um, and it took a very long time to come. But you know, when when um, when it arrived, I was um, not Mikella's fault, by the way. They were excellent. Um, but I I was really impressed. And and at that point, I'd only had the raspberry, the Limbo raspberry, which I thought was fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, and the thing is, if I reflect back on my early steps of of AF beer journey. Um, a lot of AF beers had like a slightly metallic taste to them that right. you kind of went, you almost immediately knew it was like, you knew it was AF, but it was, there was like this signature kind of like metal-y taste. And every AF beer I've tried by McKellar, it, that does not exist. And I thought maybe, maybe, you know, sour beers lend themselves really well to AF, right? Um, For sure. But, that's, but this is the other thing, like th this beer like is just, like absolutely beautiful but also drinking in the sun's amazing like there there's some serious skill in this um and i think it's a, i think it's an absolutely fantastic um it's, it's so tasty it's, it's i think um is yeah i think there's a slight sort of funkiness to all of the alcohol free beers we do as well because of the yeast we use uh, because it's feeding off those uh, microorganisms uh it is developing random flavors, uh, you know, which kind of does give each beer a different uh, kind of character. So you will get a bit of funkiness uh, with ours, um, which I think makes them more exciting, Yeah. Uh, hopefully. Yeah, yeah I think I instead think so. of trying to create beers that are equivalent to their alcoholic counterparts, it's let's create beers and beverages that are exciting completely because of the ingredients and the and almost the difficulties we have in the brewing process i mean it's very fortunate that um it's april and this and the uh and the time of 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 this festival because we have access to to the riesling yeah um, which is you know a very seasonal you know once a year uh once a year thing um, for McKellar and we use uh, Riesling juice in a lot of our beers. Um, we partnered um, with um, Weingott Merrier Vineyard in, in Germany. Um, a lot of people might not know, but uh, the vineyards that where this grows it, are actually McKellar's vineyards. Oh, wow. Um, it was uh, 2015, I believe, that Mikel sort of met with Matthias um, Myra, who is the guy who owns Why Not, um, Why Not Maya, um, and he bought, because that's what people do, he bought a vineyard <laughs> in, 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 a, in a winemaking uh, village in Germany of, um, uh, of Keston, and, uh, and Matthias sort of looks over and uh, that, that vineyard, and we produce all of our grape juice, grape mask for all of our beers, including alcohol-free but we also produce our own wine they're called Big Geek Riesling 
and you know we've had a series of beers um large abv brew tales or uh ipas um, my personal favorite with riesling juice was a, a pale ale called henry and his sisters um so yeah it, it is it is mckellar grapes from mckellar vineyards uh, grown in Germany because being a gypsy brewer we can allow ourselves to create whatever we want wherever we want yeah um, why why limit ourselves to to just brewing something and just growing things in Denmark when we can go and brew lagers in Germany or brew Belgian style ales in Belgium and grow Riesling in Germany so I, I, I think it's um, really really impressive and I, I know that you know it's it's what I've really loved is I've noticed more in, in the in the UK the last couple of years, um, for example, that I could go to Marks and Spencers and there would be a really nice selection of McKellar beers canned kind of there. And there was a few of those that were very low ABV. And I was really impressed by those. I think Hair of the Dog might be one of them. It's nice low ABV, Berliner Weiss, excellent beer. So to I, I knew that... I think what I really respect about McKellar is they've not launched something before it was ready. You mentioned about the investment in kind of R and D. Three or four, there. three or four years. Yeah, I mean, but that's really important because when you know it's launched and look, look how it looks. You know, it looks incredible. The artwork's always incredible with McKellar. Um, but how important and, and when you're thinking about um, low ABV or alcohol-free beer, um, has there been any the thought process around like how you just like define your branding between kind of your boozy your boozy beers um and your af or or actually has it been a, almost a no we're, we're gonna just do our thing that we do that's really really solid and everyone recognizes us um but just whatever we put out we're gonna just do really well like what has been has there been any kind of thought process around af in particular the the funny answer is the reason af came about is um our founder Mikel you you might know we have um what's called the Mikel running club we now have a cycling club he's a, a a champion long distance marathon runner and it came out of the fact that he won and he does every morning there's running machines in the offices will wake up and do at least a 10k every morning oh wow and he, he outright said, and there's interviews you can you can find them. Some of them I think are on YouTube as well. Where he's just like, I I got I wake up and I was hung over and I found it difficult to run. It's no um, it's it's no uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's it's no secret that McKellar are famed for very big high ABV beers. You know, we're, we're famed for our giant stouts and big sours and big IPAs. Um, and they're really hard to do a 10k run in the morning and we still wanted to create something incredible so we created it was more of a just a, a selfish passion project for Mikel I think <laughs> that turned out to be um, incredible and the Limbo series and the Kinder series was another one if you guys are familiar with alcohol free Mikel beers we also have the Kinder series um, are just variations on that theme and we found something that really works and what can we do to make things more exciting and make something the best we can in whatever situation we do we we push that that mantra on to the restaurants we open um i think i think it's hong kong it's, i believe it's our hong kong site is has, has a michelin star now amazing um we put that to we we have chocolates the bean geek chocolate uh spirits um just the the breweries we open across the world the fun of McKellar is just working with the absolute best we can and not limiting ourselves, as we said before, to, to the best in our area. We'll go, we'll go everywhere else to get the best. Yeah. Because I love that. Putting stuff in your body, then it might as well be great, huh? And I think the uh, original idea for our first non-alcoholic beer, Drinking in the Sun, you know, came from quite a strange concept, um, trying to create a beer that glowed in the dark, um, which eventually became an alcohol-free beer. And that's a long story in itself. Don't <laughs> get me started. Didn't know um, that. Didn't know that. Yeah. That's very funny. Yeah, but, you know, it's kind of moved on from there to the point where we're now creating our own yeast strains and uh, trying to push what's possible with flavour um, and kind of, you know, 
before before I moved uh, moved to McKellar and worked for them. Uh, you know, I always appreciate the fact that they were trying to do things a little bit different to everybody else. And I think that if we can do that with alcohol-free beers, that really does um, keep what we're about alive. Um, and yeah, show people that we're just trying to show what's possible really with the styles of beer that we're making. Um, so. it's, um, I think what we were talking about is yesterday when um, we kind of opened the, the festival, that you need um, you need people that are really passionate about alcohol free beer to kind of help like spread the love and, and bring others on board. Um, and it really helps <laughs> when um, you know you get several kind of really good alcohol free beers kind of under your belt and then you kind of recognize like that's great, that's great, that's great that when you're then helping somebody else make that switch or like, and it's really interesting. You mentioned about the, the running and the cycling and like wanting to do sport, but also having a real passion for beer. Lots of my friends are exactly like that. And they actually, they're really passionate about lots of different things. They're passionate about their running and their cycling and coffee and great beer. And they're really, they have these passion points, but trying to reconcile all of them can be really difficult. And, and even harder on a hangover. It's really hard on a hangover because you just <laughs> want to sit around and eat biscuits. But this this really does make a massive difference. And, um, you know, I'd love to think that five years from now um, that this kind of, uh, this market has exploded, you know, that much more. And that th we see these beers and beers of this standard kind of stocked in lots of places so that it's a, a really viable alternative option for people mm. as opposed to Pepsi, Coke, you know, endless lemonade, etc. So I think it's absolutely fantastic. So what's coming next? Are you allowed to tell us like what's what is the, in the AF McKellar pipeline? Is there are there any hints that can be dropped? Yeah, I think like basically at the moment we've got a few beers in our core range. Um, and from the alcohol free range we do, they have become core range. So drinking some the Limbo series, mainly the Limbo Raspberry, um, uh, Henry and his Science, which is yeah. sort of the base beer for, for this. Um, we've got Weird Weather, which uh, has picked up numerous awards uh, along the way. I think at the uh, one of the Swedish uh, beer festivals a couple of years ago, it actually won best beer of the whole festival uh, above actual beer, uh, alcoholic beer that, that is. Um, so that was quite a uh, amazing thing, really. Um, we've got a new beer called Henry Goes Lightly, which is a Gosa uh, style beer. Um, and yeah, we do have a lot of other beers planned for the rest of the year. Nothing I can probably give away too much about right now, but um, the Limbo series will continuously try to push the boundaries with the fruits we use. Uh, last year, we did a beer called Limbo Series Blueberry, which was absolutely amazing. Uh, we actually used um, sort of double the amount of fruit with the blueberry uh, to what we usually use. And uh, honestly, it was so good uh, <laughs> to the point where we sort of thought... I tried that one and I really want to try it now. <laughs> yeah, we sort of thought maybe we need to think again about how we release this one again because it was actually an incredibly uh pricey beer to make and um it, it was amazing the taste reflected that there was um many many kilograms of blueberries per liter of well i can't remember yeah figure, yeah was, well, i know how much sort of, of blueberries yeah. Yeah. I yeah. when they're reduced so <laughs> um only but we we do a seasonal uh, alcohol free stout for Christmas, the version of our Beer Geek, um, which we'll do again later this year, I'm sure. Um, I hope so anyway. But listen, we're, we're always trying to come up with new ideas and hopefully I can share more about it and, and Joe can share more about it in the coming months. But um, right now it's about getting back on track after COVID because yeah. as you can imagine, um, the last year kind of threw our brewing schedule a bit sideways and yeah, I can, I can, I can you imagine. know we were we were trying to figure out what people wanted consistently and uh we're known for obviously brewing probably a hundred different styles of beer every year between our different sites Balhaven, Mikella San Diego, Mikella, 
uh, war pigs. Uh, so, you know, it's about getting back to where we were with that and getting a steady, consistent plan. Um, and already in the last couple of weeks, me and Joe have seen a huge increase in demand for beers because I think the markets are starting to reopen and people are starting to actually planned for a world outside of lockdown yeah exactly so once we get a better idea of what's happening with that um we will be able to share, share more of what we're doing um i think and if you had to pick your favorite mckellar af beer what would you pick i would pick I'd, drinking the sun yeah i'd actually pick what we're drinking now the riesling yeah. it's stunning so much i mean obviously there's <laughs> there's riesling grapes but you get so much like green apple and peach and bubble gum and lime and you'd expect with riesling grapes that you know they have a, a very dry almost sulfuric sort of finish in, in, in a classic riesling but yeah. because they're not fermenting those particular sugars you're still getting this absolute juice explosion in the mouth from this beer that you wouldn't usually get with a great must beer or, or or just riesling in general particularly from a german riesling maybe yeah. maybe something in the new world you, you'd have more fruit um but just beautifully perfumed Good i mean beer. i uh I, I totally agree with joe that this is a pretty special beer and i wish uh, that we could all be trying the blueberry version, not to, not to sort of like uh, put down this version, but like one day when that's available again, I just want to try that again because it's so amazing. But for me, it'd be drinking the sun uh, because drinking the sun is just so easily accessible in terms of flavour. And honestly, like most people that I'm with that try that beer don't really know that they're drinking a non-alcoholic beer. And I think that's got to be the ultimate goal, really, hasn't it? I mean, maybe it isn't, I don't know, but... You no, know, I, if I'm I, out... I think that's really fair, actually. I think that's really fair. There's um, you know, a, fr a friend of mine runs a vegan restaurant and he says he doesn't want to be thought of as a vegan restaurant. He just wants to be regarded as a brilliant restaurant, right? And that, that's yeah. the ultimate, like, that's the goal. And, and I think that that's... Um, I think that's really fair and, and the drink, drinking in the sun again it's an absolutely fantastic beer and I and you're quite right I don't even think about it in being an AF beer because you could hand it to anybody and they wouldn't know um yeah, yeah. what about um is there any plans to or have you it, you know is this any of your AF beers available on draft is there a plan or in the future to try and get this you know stuff on draft and in pubs yeah there's a plan uh <laughs> There's a plan at some, at some point. Um, <laughs> Joe yeah, there's a, a lot of work to do. <laughs> yeah, we'd love to do it. I mean, first of all, I think we need to just check that people are ready to start buying draft beer again. Um, that's the main thing. You know, when we talk to our on trade customers who are gearing up now to open up again and start buying draft beer, the main thing is they have the right beer for them. Uh, whether that's us or not um, and we need to know where we exist within what they can offer to their customers that's what we're most sort of uh, passionate about really you know there's no point in us putting a beer into a pub just for the sake of it trying to get a line or or trying to get sales or, or whatever because mine and joe's job is uh, primarily sales so you know but in order to have a long relationship with these venues and these customers we need to set up something that's going to work um so let's see how people kind of yeah just kind of get back on board and 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 you know get rid of all the stuff they've got in the cellar from the past six months that they may may be worried about and then i think we'll start those discussions but i think drinking the sun draft oh, we're, we're already yeah talking about it we're already testing it and yes we'd love to roll it out in the UK and I actually think it could be a massive game changer for us um, in terms of in terms of getting out to a wider, wider audience so if the uh, if the R&D of creating Michelinensis yeast is anything to go by there's still a lot of R&D in getting our, <laughs> our, our beers ready to where, where we want to put them out on draft but there is a, there's certainly a plan
Yeah, That's right. no, that sounds really good. And I think like, you know, you want, um, there's, there's lots of people out there that have never tried an alcohol-free beer or their experience of having tried an alcohol-free beer might've been quite challenging. Um, so you really want their first taste of, um, like, of, of McKellar AF beer to be as, as brilliant as possible, don't you? So um, that sounds really, really exciting. So is there anything else that you would like to share um, with the audience at all? Have we got any questions in the chat? Let's have a quick look. Happy to try and answer anything we can. <laughs> Some of the wandering about the yeast. Um, um, well, how, yeah. how was it developed? Um, so, a lot of our alcohol, well, all of our alcohol free beers, we refer to them as Flemish primitives. Uh, that started as uh, the Flemish primitives were painters that bought a new style to painting, you know, and it's very similar to what McKellar and De Prafbrau do with, with our beers. Um, the development of the yeast, as I said, came from the, the, the want to not have to do post, a post-fermentation process or remove ingredients or remove processes, because by doing so, you're, you're going to be, even if it's minimal, you're going to be re removing flavour. Um, so the research was done with primarily food yeasts, things that happen in, in natural food fermentation, like breads and cheeses and um, uh, like compots, fruit ferments, stuff like that, stuff which produces a huge amount of flavor, but isn't producing alcohol. Uh, and then to get that to work in a, in a traditional brewing environment is completely different. You know, that's trying to force a, a, a square peg in a round hole, you know? Um, so we're very lucky to, to be uh, intrinsically linked with the, the incredible breweries and incredible scientists like Dirk at Grove, who, you know, with development and, and, and help and, uh, and um, sort of the, the clear message from McKellar that there is a market for this product, you know, we put in the, the tools uh, and, the, and the scientific equipment to, to just just test, 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 test. So many, so many different use until we started to get something kicking off. You know, we started to find something and, and a way to develop those flavors and we put those in the beers and they didn't work. So we go back and try it and, and we kept going. And, and until we get to the point where we are at now with um, McKellar which, you know, as the name suggests, is, is exclusive to us at McKellar, um, you're not gonna find alcohol-free beers that taste like McKellar beers because we put in the work, we put in all the, uh, the, the time and the money and into, into, in, into creating this product um, for ourselves. So it's, and what we found, as we said earlier, it, it's not a beer yeast, it's a food, food yeast. So our beers are gonna be not trying to emulate traditional styles, though we do, and they now can. And I'm sure as we grow our understanding of the yeast, because it's still pretty young, you know, it's three or four years old, this yeast. <laughs> and beer as a process is 800, 900, 1,000 years old, you know, going back to the ancient Egyptians, you know, so. Uh, we, we, uh, we do actually sell the uh, McCallum's yeast uh, to for the brewery sometimes as well. So, uh, well, I don't know who we have or if we have, <laughs> but um, it is available uh, yeah. to two of the breweries. Well, there we go. That's uh, yeah. if anyone's uh, listening. <laughs> <laughs> it is, it's, but, I think what I, I really respect is that I, I really love that, that you've kind of like owned the whole process and that you haven't necessarily seen that the, the solution is just to extract the alcohol out afterwards um, because you understand the implications of, of what that can do. Um, so I really love that this process is pretty unique um, and that, you know, the, the end product is still like, it's just, it's just, it's just amazing. So um, I, I'm really excited to see what comes in the months ahead and, um, and yeah, like, and hopefully, you know, draft one day would be amazing as well to have a, a really great, yeah, fingers crossed, um, crossed. kind of um, option. Um, so when um, things start to kind of open back up, so um, Joe, just remind me, like, how long have you've worked for McKellar? How long have you been looking after sales at McKellar? Um, I'm the new boy. 
I'm the new one. I've, I, I've been uh, with McKenna uh, uh, late uh, late 2020. I joined. So, oh wow, really? Yeah. Long. yeah. Joe Joe joined us uh, November first, which was the first day we went back into lockdown, and he was brought on as our untrained specialist. So, <laughs> uh, uh, unfortunately for Joe, <laughs> the whole industry shut down on his first day, and he's been doing an amazing job. Just, uh, I mean. You know what can I say? Finding sales where he can and, and keeping things ticking over for us because uh, it's not been an easy uh, first six months in the job for him. So yeah, I'm I, yeah. sort of intrinsically linked with Michaela. I think uh, though I'm now working for them, um, we have a, a world famous festival in Copenhagen, usually in the summer. Um, though if possible, we're going to try and do it this winter. Yeah. Uh, COVID willing, uh, called NBCC, the McKellar Copenhagen Beer Celebration. And I've yeah. been part of the team there, uh, managing volunteers and setting up for, if, if, if it happened in 2020, that would have been my seventh year doing it. So. Oh, wow. Yeah. I've never been to that one, but I did go to the Wild Beer Festival at Baghaven in February 2020. So just when oh, really? I was there, yeah. And um, with my very passionate McKellar friend, James, and... Um, and it, it, it was amazing. It was absolutely it's incredible. A beautiful uh, uh, spot, Barham, on the on 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 the on the water there in this sort of weird industrial dockyard wasteland. And then there's this little oasis yeah. down by the water uh, where you can get fantastic beers and food. It I was, think uh, I think that was the last time I left London. Yeah, it's same here. Same here. Yeah. Like I'm yeah. in Reading, but yeah, it was the last time I went away. Um, and uh, oh, it was it was an absolutely incredible experience. I would totally do it again. And that's the only time I've been to Copenhagen, but that's where I went and did a bit of a McKellar tour. So you know, I went and did, went around War Pigs and the bar, various different bars and stuff. But um, yeah, I just I have so much respect, and uh, I mean the best airport because they have a McKellar bar in the air. Oh, so Thank good, you. so good. And this is why I feel a bit sorry for Joe as well, because it's like, he started at, right at the start of lockdown and we've just been in our houses for six months. And when I first started for McKellar, my first day was flying out to Copenhagen and, and oh, oh, Joe. To get out and drinking at war pigs and stuff. And I just feel really bad for Joe because it's like, he hasn't had a chance to do that, but it will all happen in the next it few will months. <laughs> it will come. Yeah. It will all happen. And, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it. Like, thank you so much for um, talking us through um, and, you know, taking us through the AFB. And um, I think this is absolutely fantastic. I would recommend it to anybody, but I'm definitely going to be on the lookout for those blueberries now. You put it in my head. So once they're... Yeah, we'll keep an eye out. Yeah. I'm not sure when blueberry season is, but we'll, we'll, we'll get them. <laughs> I don't care how much it is. I will. I'll just buy it. You can price it. You have my permission. Price it as you know, however much you want to. And um, yeah, I'll be there buying it. But yeah, thank you so so much. Um, I don't know Robin. Um, he's kind of he's been in uh, in the background, the organizer of this festival. I don't know if you've got anything else that um, you wanted to add or. Here he is. He's come back. Look. <laughs> no, just was, thank you so much, guys. It's it's great to hear from you and um. So I really hope you can get out there soon and, uh, and have a good, good experience. <laughs> just to travel again. I, I, I'm very fortunate that I've spent a lot of time in Copenhagen, but a lot isn't enough. Nice. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for joining this evening. And thank you, Zoe, for hosting it. Um, I'll see you again, Zoe, on Sunday for the for the Birmingham Brew Company. And, and thanks again, Tom and Joe, for, for joining us. Have a great weekend, did, guys. So much did, I, did I hear 